video. We are gonna create this cool 3D Instagram reel like Bart VFX. So let's get started. Create a new Fusion composition and navigate to the Fusion page. Now drag your clip from the media pool. Press F2 to rename it. Next, add an image plane 3D node. Then add two merge 3D nodes. And finally, add a render 3D node. Connect the output of render 3D to media out. Click on the second merge node and name it main merge and name the first one as parent one. With this, our initial 3D setup is complete. Now let's adjust the character properly to fit the viewer's perspective. Click on the image plane 3D node, then navigate to the transform tab. Adjust the Z offset until it fits within the window. Also play around with the Y and X offset to position it accurately. Once that's done, add a camera and connect it with the main merge. Go to frame zero, then navigate to the inspector window. Add keyframes for the Y and Z offsets. Increase the Z offset until your character fits with the viewer. Once satisfied, proceed to frame 30 and decrease the value to zoom in on the character. You may also need to adjust the Y offset for proper alignment. Once these adjustments are made, open the spline editor. Select the camera. Now select the both Y and Z offsets together, then press S for smooth curve. Now press T and click on the lock icon. Change the value to 45. Now if we preview, we should see something like this. Now click on the camera node and move to frame 35. Add keyframes for the Y and Z offsets. We want our animation to stop here for these few frames. Let's create this text and curve line animation. Add a text node and then add an image plane 3D node to it. Connect it with parent one. Type your desired text. I'll type I'd always say. Once done, drag the main merge to one of the viewers to view the 3D space. All right, now bring the image plane 3D of the text node forward until it appears on top of the character. Click on the text node and choose the font of your liking. I'll use the Open Sans Extra Bold Italic font. Adjust the text size to view it properly. Also go to the Transform tab, click on Size, and increase the Y size to make it a little larger. Adjust the text properly. Once done, add a Soft Glow node. Increase the glow size a little and decrease the gain. All right, let's head to around frame 35 and check if the text is positioned properly. If you notice that it's not aligned as desired, feel free to make adjustments. In my case, I'll decrease the size slightly to ensure it fits well. Once adjustments are made, right-click on the typing area and choose Follower from the options. Click on the modifiers to open the tab and change the delay to two for now. Then click on the shading tab and search for softness. Ensure you're on frame zero. Increase the XY value all the way up and add a keyframe. Next, move to around frame 15 and decrease the value to zero. Now, if we move the playhead, we'll notice that the text appears too blurry and doesn't look good. To improve this, let's go to the timing tab, click on the order, and choose random but one by one. Now, let's decrease the delay a little as well. Changing it from 0.7 to one should be a good value. Let's preview the animation to see how it looks. All right, let's animate the opacity as well to ensure the text doesn't appear from the start. Select the text node, then go to frame 10. Click on the shading, make sure that you're on the Tools tab, and decrease the opacity to zero. Add a keyframe, then move 10 frames forward, and increase the opacity all the way up. Now if we preview the animation, we'll get something like this. Let's continue by creating the curve line. Add a background node, rename it, and change its color to your choice. I'll go for an orangish shade. Then add an image plane 3D node, and connect it with parent one. Drag the curve line to the viewer to work on it. Click on it and add a mask paint node. Select polyline stroke and start drawing a line like this. Just click and drag go to the bottom and do the same. It doesn't need to be exact, but you can adjust points as needed by clicking on each one of them. Once complete, drag the main merge back to the viewer. Click on the image plane 3D node and move it forward. You can simply copy the Z value from the previous node and paste it here. Adjust the scale, also Y and Z position as needed. Feel free to make any adjustments to the curve lines position using the same technique. Additionally, you can click on the mask paint node and select it from the viewer to make minor adjustments. I'll adjust the bottom part slightly. Once satisfied, add a soft glow node and adjust the value as needed. To make the line thinner, click on the brush control and decrease the size. Lastly, I'll also add a drop shadow to the text node since my character is too bright. Feel free to skip this step, but it may enhance the design a little. All right, let's animate it. Go to around frame 10, click on the mask paint node, then go to stroke control. Decrease the write-on value to zero and add a keyframe. Move forward 10 frames and increase it again. Make sure that you're changing the end value. This will create the animation effect of the line being drawn. 
All right, let's arrange the nodes properly. Once done, copy the text node till the soft glow node and paste it here. Add an image plane 3D node to it and connect it with parent one. Now click on the text node and reset it. Type the next text, which in my case is that. For this one, I'll choose the extra bold Open Sans font. Once you've positioned your text properly, go to around frame 20. Then open the Transform tab and add a keyframe to the Shear Y offset. Change its value to 1. Now go to the Shading tab, open Position, and add a keyframe to the X and Y offset. Change the Y value to move the text slightly upward. Move forward 5 frames and change the value to 0. Go back to the Transform tab and do the same with the Y Shear value. Now change the global in value to 20, so the text appears after 20 frames. Now if we preview the animation we'll get something like this. Now select all the nodes until parent 1 and press Ctrl plus G to make a group. With this our first scene is complete. Alright let's proceed with this part. Go to frame 32, then add a 3D transform node. Add keyframes for the Y and Z offsets. Next go to around frame 50 and adjust the Y value to move the scene towards the bottom. Also change the Z value to move it further from the camera. If we preview the animation, we'll get something like this. Alright, let's hide this part of our character. Add a black background node, then an image plane 3D and merge 3D. Name the merge 3D as parent 2 and connect it with main merge. Click on parent 2 and bring it forward until it hides the character. Now add a rectangle mask to the black background node and adjust it like this. Increase the soft edges a little. This will give a nice fade out look and hide the sharp line. So here I've created this line by following the same method as the curve line and positioned it by adjusting scale and XYZ offset. Now let's animate it. Go to around frame 35 and decrease the right on value. Add keyframe to it. Then move forward around 12 to 13 frames and increase it again. Now copy the mask paint and background node and connect them here. Click on the merge node and flip it. Adjust it properly and you will get something like this. Now add another black background node and position it like this so it hides the character. Bring its opacity down. Go to frame 40 and keyframe it. Move forward 10 frames and increase the opacity so that it will hide the character properly. Now select all these node and make another group. Alright, let's tackle this part. Add another transform 3D node and add a keyframe on frame 45. Then go to frame 65 and change the Z and Y values like this so it moves far from the camera. Also ensure that the graph for all the camera animation is the same as the first one. Alright, I've added a new text node and positioned it by adjusting the parent 3 node. Now let's animate this. Go to around frame 45. Right click on the typing area and select character level styling. Now go to the modifiers tab, then shading, and select all the letters except the first letter. Decrease the Y offset. Now select all the letters except first two and decrease again. Repeat this process for all letters, once done. Click on the text tab and add a keyframe here. Now go to around 10 frames forward, select all the text except the first one, and change the value to zero. You will get something like this. All right, I've added two more texts. For the word king, I've added a simple mask reveal animation between frames 52 to 60. For the last and final scene, let's add a new transform 3D node. Add a keyframe for the Z position on frame 60. Move forward 20 frames and increase the Z value. So here I've added two text nodes and increased the Y size by going to the Transform tab of the text node. That's why these texts looks much bigger than others. Now go to around frame 63 and decrease the opacity. Add a keyframe, then move 10 frames forward and increase it to 1. Repeat this process for the other text node. Now we'll add the raise effect. Copy both text nodes and connect them like this. Change the color of main text nodes to orangish. Then add a raise node before the merge. Play with its center XY, blend and exposure a little until you get a proper raise effect. Do the same for the other text. You can also add soft glow before the raise to make it more shiny. Now bring your 3D logo model or clip. If you want to know how to create a 3D logo in DaVinci Resolve, check out the video in the description. Since I have a clip, I will connect it by adding an image plane 3D. Also since it has a black background, I will add a luma gear to adjust it. Now position the logo at the bottom, just play with XYZ offset and size a little. I did little bit of adjustments and added blur to all the nodes which came before the last scene and also added motion blur. I have already shown how to apply motion blur properly on the 3D logo tutorial so check that out. And with this, our tutorial is done, please since I need to find a job.